Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 495 for Causal Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take an idea or three And we run it through the ringer. We analyze it. We dissect it. We compress it. We expand it so that we can each learn and tune our business brains together every single episode here in Durham, New Hampshire, tuning my business brain with you all. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I'm I'm turning this giant knob, tuning my brain. And I feel like the (laughs) knob has gotten bigger as you know, o- over the years, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I gotta, I gotta learn this, and I gotta learn that. Uh, and you know, I, I, I saw a comment today. I thought it was pretty amazing on X. That somebody said, "Hey, have the uh, courage to suck at something new." And I thought that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, trying something different, tuning your brain every day, trying to take on something different, and know that you you may be bad at it to start, but uh, sticking with. Oh, no, that's I, I, I think that's really valuable. Uh, yeah. cause I know I, and this is true for me sometimes, although I, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it in recent years, but it's certainly true. I see in other people, and that's probably why I've gotten better at it, uh, is, is that, that, you know, fear of failure, the, the avoidance yeah. of failure. And it's like, well, and, and, and again, this is a question I asked myself for probably, you know, 45 years of my life, but you know, or I should have asked myself for 45 years of my life is if you've never done it before, how in the world would you expect to be an expert? Exactly. Like it's, but I think as we, but yeah, but as you kind of move up and let's, you know, in our topic, the business world, yeah, it, you, you do have to remind yourself that like, yes, you know, I'm trying to grow my, my, you know, quote, personal brand on X and, you know, on some platforms, e-commerce stuff that I'm involved in, I have like 300,000 followers and X it's like, 260. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty good so though. That's like, way up from where you were a oh, month ago. Yeah. 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 I started at, you know, 25 know, or something. 30, 30, it's like yeah, 10 X, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I thought it was producing, but I, I want to talk, I want to, uh, start to show off before we get into our main topic, uh, which I'm also very interested in talking about. I, I, I want to talk about productivity and I'd like to, throw out a productivity, quick productivity tip that you and I, I think both use, yep. and then uh, talk a little bit more about productivity with an upcoming, uh, upcoming, some upcoming news that we're going to share. Does yeah. Sense? Sounds good. Yeah. What, what's your, what's your good. productivity tip? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, it's a very basic and I, and I, as I started thinking about it for the show today, I, I wanted to remind people that sometimes productivity tips are, are physical, you know, it's not just use this software, do this, change your timing, you know, whatever. But I have a piece of uh, equipment on my desk that increases my productivity dramatically. And it, and it's so simple, but it's, it's called a quartet. We've talked about it on the show yep. before. And it's a it's like a little whiteboard, but it's glass, which makes it much more pleasant to write on and erase on. Yeah. But it sits between my keyboard and my monitor. So it's, it's a little rectangle and it's amazing because yeah. it, it's just, it's right about, in front imagine of you. it to be about the same size and shape as your keyboard, but yes. slightly higher up so that when it sits between your keyboard and your monitor, it's a, it's smooth flow from the, the top edge of your keyboard up this quartet. Uh, uh, you know, I, I forget, I don't even, it's just a glass pad. Like I, I yeah. love this thing. I've had one. So do I for years i don't remember if you told me about him or i told you about i think him. so I, I got it i bought it well i don't know who, who whatever it is yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I i don't I, I as soon as one of us found out about it the yeah. other one was like it all in and yeah i it's, it's, it's i amazing. use it i found i get distracted at and what happens yeah. is i wind up interrupting my co-host as i have done and am literally in the middle of doing as i'm speaking right now what I normally try to do and clearly just failed at is use my quartet pad. I grab the little thing. When I have a thought, I write it down on that. That way I don't interrupt you, but I also don't forget about it. And 
I'm not obsessing about remembering it because I've just written it down and therefore I can listen to you. So I want to listen to you. Gives you a much wider bandwidth. Yes. And so I, I've talked about this thing so much. Uh, they actually sent me a one of their easels, this Agile Quartet Agile Glass Dry Erase Easel. It's it, it, this thing is beautiful, and you know, and it. So this it is like your height, down. right? Yeah, it's nice. You stand in front of it, but I mean, if you're doing presentations, this thing just raises the scale of it, oh. uh, and I, I I love it, and. I, I, and this is not a commercial, but I went to their site to make sure I was pronouncing it correct. And they have some, they have a 10% off uh, coupon up there at quartet.com. But that's not why I'm listening it because I, my, my quartet on front of my keyboard is covered with stuff we talked about right before the show. Yes. And then I will go delegate that stuff and make things happen. And then I will erase it and be ready for the next uh, thing that pops up on there. So check it out, quartet.com. It's, it's amazing. All right. Hey, look, while we're here, I want to take a minute and talk about a fantastic podcast recommendation that we have. Leo Laporte hosts a show called This Week in Tech, one of the longest running tech news shows in the world that launched in 2005 on twit.tv. In the 18 plus years since, they've covered every major tech story with some of the biggest names and smartest people by doing a deep dive into the biggest tech stories. A different panel of experts join Leo Laporte every Sunday, bringing expert analysis, helpful advice, and entertaining discussions. You'll listen to every episode knowing more about what's happening in the tech world around you. And they deal with some of the biggest issues in the world today, not just computing, Windows, Mac, and Linux, but also AI, Twitter, cybersecurity, privacy, search, and so much more. Visit twit.tv slash twit to subscribe to This Week in Tech. And thanks to Leo and the team for doing the swap with us. So last week, Shannon, we were talking about leadership styles and yeah. leadership in general. And you had, you had some more thoughts about that. I want to tug on this particular thread with you. Yeah, I think um, it, th- there's two you know, s- significant types of leadership. I mean, there's lots of them, but yeah, you, yeah. you can lead uh, fear-based leadership where everybody's afraid that if they don't do something right or – you're going to get upset or something bad is going to happen uh, or leading out of respect where people mm. uh, want to impress you because they respect you and uh, they're, they're doing it for more internal intrinsic type of yeah, yeah. value, right? They get a bigger. And so I, I, I want to break them down and talk about each type and of, I'm sure you can figure out which type I think is more powerful, but um, I I, th- I think it's worth you know digging into a little bit more. I yeah, I mean, we've certainly all seen examples of fear-based leadership. I'm I'm not good at that. I I, I think no. there there are times <laughs> where and and I, I I say that maybe we're wrong. Then maybe well, I'm that's wrong. Because, that's what I mean. Yeah. Is like yeah. I, I don't say that judgmentally about anyone except me. Uh, You know, I see people who use fear and be very productive, have very productive teams and be very successful with it. It is not how my brain works. I, I am a, I am a lead by example person. I'm an, I'm a lead with, I guess you'd, you'd call it respect-based leadership, but it's, it's more, um, yeah, it's more just like. Let's do this together. Teamwork. Yeah, your style. Yeah. It's just my style. Yeah. I, I'm not. I, but I, 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 say, I suppose if I, if I use fear in my leadership, it is at times when, if I get frustrated by someone not being able to do something that I think they can do and then showing them, Hey, look, this is how it's done. Go do it. I can see how that would instill fear in people because it's like, oh crap, my my boss yeah, thinks this so is my boss thinks this is easy, right? Yes. Like, so, but it's not. Yes. I'm not threatening them outwardly, explicitly by saying, if you but don't do this, fear. I'm going to fire you. But there's still fear there, so I I think I probably do use it unintentionally. Yeah. Um, but I'm well, aware. Anytime, I'm aware of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you're involved with someone's livelihood, meaning you sign their paycheck or whatever issue their paycheck, 
there's probably some fear in that, right? That, yes. Oh, if I don't perform, I could. This could be a big problem for me. Yes, yeah, I might um, not be able to have the opportunity the to do it again. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that um, I have the similar style that you're talking about. Is trying to get people to do things because they want to make me happy, right? Right. I. Uh, that is, if you can pull that off. It really makes up for so many other problems in, in, and I'm only speaking to myself because I don't, you, you know, listener, I don't know your business, but in my business, you know, I was pretty good at some things, but I was terrible at many things. I still am. But if people are trying to do good during the day and trying to show, um, show you how good they are at their job and they're getting things done it makes up for a lot of other mistakes in my experience. Yes. And, and, what, and because I think it builds uh, a connection and credibility and trust when you tell them I'm not good at, you know, Hey, I don't, this isn't my yeah. wheelhouse. I'm not that great at this. So I, it, it is going to be a little bumpy, you know? Um, and, and I think that, that building that respect over time, um, it's just such a better system. Yeah, it, it, and having people be afraid. It's, I, I think it works in both directions. And what I mean by both directions is we're talking about the one direction with your team, your employees, the people that work for you, but it also works outwardly with your customers, right? Where your customers, you have a, a, a interactions with them and they have the opportunity to perform for you or not, right? Like I, I know that that seems like an odd thing to say when in general people are paying you, your company to do a service or provide a product for them, but the customers have their part in that primarily in terms of paying for things, right? But yeah. also in terms of when they come to you and ask for support, help, whatever that the version of that is that applies to your business. There is a two way street there and customers will sometimes make mistakes. They will sometimes take a long time to pay if, if you've given them terms, right. They will sometimes yep. ask for help and ask, you know, for something that they in theory already had the information to solve. Right. And so now you're, you're there showing, or they complain, Oh, this doesn't work. Right. And it's like, well, Yes, it does. And and you walk them through it. And those kinds of things, you have the opportunity to be a hard ass about it or a kind sort of, you know, softer personality with them. And I've seen companies take it both ways. I always, almost always take it the much softer way. I, I'm generally, if someone owes us money, right? Customer owes us money. Right. I'm pretty soft about it. It's, it, it, especially if it's a customer I'm working with over a long period of time, there's red tape can crop up in any business of any size. Now, if it's a habitual thing and habitual thing, cause I'm a grammar nerd too, uh, that's, that's, that needs to be addressed on its own. But if it's one thing where the rest are, you know, they, they've paid regularly over time. They have one thing where it's, like there's some hiccup in the system for whatever reason they can't pay in a timely fashion like they normally do. I kind of let that, I don't let it go. I make it known that we're aware of it, but I don't give them a hard time about it because that to me is an, a perfect opportunity to build trust. And it's the same way with your team internally. You're building that trust when they're making mistakes, you're allowing them to make mistakes you're allowing them to learn. And I, I don't know. I think, I, I think that works. I think there's fear involved in both of these things, right? Because yeah, there is. Yeah. the customer is afraid that you're going to come after them for the, the money that they know they owe you and your employee, in theory, there's some level of fear. Like if I don't do this properly, well, then they're not going to continue to employ me and that's bad. So there is fear there, but you're, you're, I, I, almost intentionally don't leverage that fear. I let it exist in, in their world more than in mine. Right. Whereas okay, I want to be yeah. the person helping you through it. I know yeah, the fear's and, and there. It is. And I think, 
um, on the on the flip side, when you're kind of this friendlier leadership style and trying to connect and build trust, some members of your team they get it and they yep. respond just like we're talking about. Yep. But there's others, and I've had this experience a number of times where I've had to remind people, don't take my casual attitude or my friendly uh, demeanor as a sign of weakness because we are going to get this stuff done. Oh, yeah. And we have a system and a plan. And if you're not on board with that, because you think there's no accountability or that we won't make hard decisions, you're very mistaken. Yeah. And so there are people that really do well in the kind of environment that we're talking about here, but there's other folks that are just maybe used to someone being that hard ass on them a little more. And that's, Oh, I, I got to get this done because my supervisor is so mad or the boss is so upset. Uh, and they get it done at the last minute. Right. Or, yep. You know, the other people are like, great, I, I own this. I'm accountable. This I'm going to make great. it happen. I, oh, yeah. The yeah, people I that get are getting it support. done at the last minute, they, they don't last in my world. I, I just can't. <laughs> right. I can't have that. Yeah. Right. Like it, you, you're you're absolutely no. But you make a really good point that like in order for this, you know, trust based leadership to work, I think I think that's what we're talking about yeah. is fear based that, and right. trust based. Right. In order for trust based yeah. to work, that trust needs to go in all directions. And, and there does yes. need to be respect there where you understand that th there is a standard that we will hit. And if you don't hit that, well, then it that doesn't fit into this realm because I don't want to be a hard ass with you. I've said it on this show many times and I've said it to my I employees and team members many more times. If either one of us ever notices me micromanaging you. That is the first symptom of a much bigger problem. And yeah. like, let's address that right away. So, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, I, I would love to hear back, you know, are you, are you using Which, which do you prefer in your business? What's, or, or maybe you adjust based on the employee. Maybe you it's know, maybe a blend. We're, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, we're, we're missing out on the fact like, well, no, you just have to, with this guy you, or this person, you have to be a hard ass. <laughs> and with this person, you can use the soft thing. So maybe it's uh, a, a, a leadership lever, if you will, that, yep. that we don't lean on maybe like we should. So I'd, I'd love to learn uh, how you're doing it feedback at businessbrain.show um, before we go I want to definitely remind you to come back for the Friday show because we're going to roll out a productivity course our first in a series of business brain courses that we're developing and we're going to talk a lot more about it on the Friday show I'm really excited about this we've Me too. Uh, everybody here has worked really hard to put it together Sadie especially led the charge on this talk about a team member that just like goes and does what needs to be done that this course is absolutely that it takes content from uh, our shows here and other things that we've put together and really packages it into a very efficient productivity yeah. masterclass so yeah i'm 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 really excited about about this and i i'm excited to see what uh what you folks think of it as well. So come back on Friday. We'll talk more about it. And we might even have some, uh, a few ways for you to kind of try it out for a try, give it a trial run and, uh, yeah, keep living that charmed life. We'll see you on Friday.